time, you guys. So I just really wanted to enlighten some people that I just hear the stupidest things from. So, just so you understand what happens in a presidency when a new president takes over. And, like, let's say, like, a Republican president takes over after a Democrat one and all of a sudden things get better. It's not because the president took over. It's because of the after effects of the previous president's efforts. You're seeing it in the new presidency and that person's taking all all of the credit and then when you get out of a republican presidency and you go into a democratic presidency you see stuff like fall apart why that's the after effects of the republicans choices and then they go in the, the new president comes in and he has to fix it so while he's there in his presidency he's fixing it putting everything into place passing laws and things that trickle into the new presidency do you understand what i'm saying so when you're voting you can vote however you want but understand that that people are taking credit and people are putting up with other people's actions and reactions. And it's so frustrating to hear people in a new presidency going, oh, look, he's a new president. Look at how everything's going well. Do you honestly believe in the first six months of him being president, he made all those changes drastically when we see how long it takes for bills to pass and things to actually implement? No, that president did not do that work. No, it wasn't. It's the trickle effect from the last presidency. And 90% of all the good stuff that happens in most, in good stuff in one presidency is the trickle effect of the other one or the trickle effect of the new presidency coming in and changing what the other one did. If you guys are not seeing this, don't want to take accountability because you don't want to think that you voted wrong, then that's on you. But facts are facts. Look at the bills, which is something that nobody wants to do the work. Nobody wants to sit down and look at the bills that are being passed and then seeing how they're being implemented and how they affect different states or counties or, or whatever. Nobody wants to look at that. They just want to look at the news, see what they say, see the biased opinion, and then repeat it. Nobody wants to do the work. Nobody wants to sit down and watch the Senate, you know, while they're making these decisions and these bills are coming up and how they're arguing them and how they're being postponed, passed, or dismissed and yet you have the audacity to sit there and fight with someone who's actually doing the work and the research and seeing this happen in real time and you're just repeating what somebody told you who doesn't even know what they're talking about because they're just vaguely like telephone repeating what they thought that they heard no guys wake up wake up grow up be accountable look at the choices that people are making and how it's affecting our lives there are good politicians and there are not so good politicians. And there's a lot of lazy people that aren't looking to see what they are. Instead, they're just voting based on what somebody's telling them or the commercial, the commercial they saw. And sometimes the commercial they saw is this person's not good for us. But then when they go to vote, they don't remember what the commercial was about. They just remember the name and they end up voting for it. So the commercials that we're doing to dismiss another human being are actually giving them more votes because half the people don't even remember what the commercial was about. They just remember the name. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I just, I'm, I'm seeing a lot. I'm hearing a lot. I'm watching people and I'm like, did you even see the, like, did you even see what it was live for everyone? Did you watch it? No, I was, I wasn't, I didn't watch it. So you don't even know what you're talking about. You're just looking at this little mini snippet that was taken out and put on YouTube, but you didn't see the whole dialogue and you're sitting here trying to argue with me. Okay, buddy, no, no, there's no excuse with all the technology, all the information that's out there, that we're not educated on our government and our politics. And it's about time that we all take a more serious look at what is happening and actually get involved. It starts at your city council meetings and it trickles up. City council meetings are the most boring meetings. You'll be surprised at who's running your city council and then how it moves up the line and how changes can be made like that by the most undesirable people that you've ever met. And you're like, how does this person have a position of power? Because nobody's going to these meetings. They're the only ones going. Therefore, they get voted in and they have the power and they're making huge decisions for your city. And then you get mad at the decisions that are being made. Well, why don't you go to the city council? I couldn't go ahead to work. Okay. Send someone. Get the information. Find out.
change the schedule. Figure it out. You don't have to go to every single one, but go to a few. Find out what's going on. Like, this is the easiest time to learn about everything. All the information's out there. All of it. It's just a matter of you being proactive and understanding action and consequence. I just get so upset when someone's looking at a new president saying, oh, this person, the prices are up because of this person. No, the prices are up because of the previous person. Things are going bad because the previous person and all the bills that they passed that are now getting enacted. And now this president has to come in and fix all of that. And then when they fix all of that on their way out, this new president's going to come and take the credit for everything that this president did. Just like it happened in the last presidency. Oh, employment's up. Employment's not up because of him. Employment's up because of the previous president's actions. That's why employment went up. And this guy took credit for it. And there were so many stations that were talking about it. But nobody, no, no, because you don't want to believe that. You want to believe it. your guy did it. Your guy didn't do shit. Didn't do it. He didn't do it. Worst presidency ever. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of all these robocalls and people calling me about like car insurance is expiring. We never had that before. You know why? Because they passed the laws that allow people to harass you. To bother you. Why? Because they want you to be distracted so you don't see what they're doing. They want you to be annoyed and angry. They pass laws to annoy you, like lowering the speed limit, getting tickets, red light camera. All these things are to distract you while they do what they're doing so you don't have time to see what they're doing. Do you, are you even aware of that? Are you aware of these distraction techniques? I mean, this has been going on forever. We should be aware of that by now. When you see all this media hoopla, that's distraction techniques to stop you from seeing what is really happening, to stop you from being aware, for getting angry, for seeing what's happening. And you, you allowed it to happen. You got distracted. I don't get distracted. I look at that and I'm like, what are they trying to distract me from? What's happening right now? Where do I need to be looking that I'm not looking because I'm being misdirected? And now you know that information. So now when things like this happen, you have enough knowledge to say, what am I being distracted from? What is happening that I need to be looking at? If you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And so many people don't really even know history. So let me give you a little quick shot. Okay, the Colosseum in Italy was what they used to distract people while the government took all of the money from the Romans and ran away with it. And they destroyed the entire Roman culture. Because people were distracted by the fights in the Colosseums, by all the stuff that was happening locally. These government officials, who are probably billionaires now, old money, took from the government, raped it, took everything, which is what happened in the last presidency and it's going to happen again. They took billions of dollars and ran with it because people were so distracted they couldn't even check the numbers and this and that and blah, blah, blah. Another thing, MTA, 1990s. I can't remember the amount now. I used to remember the amount to the dollar. I forgot what it was. It was like 97 or 104, something like that, or 91 or 81. It was something like that, million dollars. There was an overage in the MTA. They were like, we have a surplus of this ridiculous amount of money. It was like 90 something million. I can't remember what it was, but it was like that, like between 90 to 100 and something million or 120, something like that, between those numbers. So what they did is they allowed everybody to ride the train and the bus for free for one day, right? The next year, they were in a deficit for the same exact amount, exact amount, the same number. It was the same number. I can't remember, I know it was in the 90s. I remember that, like late 90s, because I was riding the train and the bus at the time, and I was like, it's free today? And they're like, yeah, we had a surplus. Then they ended up being negative. Somebody took all that money. Somebody, accounting era, Somebody took all that money. How is it the same amount before we are surplus and now we're under? Truth is, businesses should not be spending the surplus. Save it for a pandemic. 
What if there's never a pandemic? Well, then you have extra money. What's wrong with extra money? Why do you have to give bonuses to everybody if you got extra money? The extra money, and I learned this when I was in college. I don't understand why we changed our thought process. You're supposed to have a surplus of funds in your business to cover you for a national emergency, like a hurricane, and people don't have money and you can still pay them. Or the pandemic, or a national crisis, or, you know, what happens if there's an, uh, uh, what's that thing called? Um... Yeah, like a national crisis, like your whole business falls apart. You have all that extra money to rebuild it and to keep paying your employees. That's what we're supposed to do. But something happened in the brains of people where they're like, okay, we have extra money, let's spend it. And then we'll just ask the government for more money later on. And then we wonder why we're in a deficit. Stop asking the government for money and do your social responsibility and actually run your business so that it's profitable and then save some money to keep you going for not just one year, but let's say three years in surplus. Where your business, your business can run for three years. And let's say you don't even need that money. Let's say all of a sudden you have like six, seven, eight years of surplus money. Guess what? Now you can expand your business. Now you can do things with your business. You don't have to get loans. So you're not in debt. You don't have to get money from the government, which puts the, the government in debt, which makes it impossible for us to run our government. Why would you do that to your government? Why would you do that to your employees? Oh, we have to shut down now because we don't have money. We had money, but I gave myself a $3 million bonus and I gave all the other employees 20, 30, $40 million bonuses and incentives and this and this and that. So now we don't have any money to pay you guys that only make minimum wage. Or, or a decent salary, but nothing close to what the executives make. That's fiscally irresponsible. As a business, no, but that's how things are done nowadays. Why? Because they made excuses because laws were passed that allowed you to do this. Doesn't mean it's right. If you're running a business, it is your responsibility to make sure that any extra money you have goes away for emergencies. You shouldn't have to ask the government for a bailout. Airlines make so much fucking money that they should be putting money away. Gas company, all these companies, but no, they give it out in bonuses. Fuck your bonus. Put it away for the people that keep the company running because you don't keep the company running. You're running the company, but you don't keep it running. Who keeps it running are the people beneath you because you couldn't have a company to run if it weren't for the people beneath you. So why aren't you protecting those people? Why do you need that $10 million bonus? You're already making good money. Greed. Capitalism, no, greed, there's a difference. Capitalism, a truly, truly capitalist society is going to be able to have that extra surplus money to keep it going because they're thinking consciously and proactively. This is not a capitalist society. This is a greed-based society, completely different. Capitalists always have money to keep it going. These people don't have money to keep it going. They're just spending, 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 spending. And a lot of these people aren't even spending in America. They're spending outside of America. They're going out overseas and this and that. And I travel all over the world. I see it. I But I don't make that much money. How much am I giving them? Like $1,000 every trip when I travel? These people are giving like tens of thousands of dollars. Buying clothes from here and there and spending buying private jets. Who needs a private jet? Why can't you just take first class? Now, I get if you have like five people in first class, it's actually cheaper to take a jet, believe it or not, because first class seats are so expensive, unless you're using your miles and upgrading. But then that makes sense when you have a bunch of people on a private jet. But do you honestly think they have a bunch of people on a private jet? Helicopters, do you really need to take a helicopter anywhere? I get you have to avoid traffic. Sometimes you do. But do you have to take it everywhere all the time? Egregious expenses. Spies entertainers i used to date guys in the finance industry and corporate law their entertainment are really whores escorts things of that service do you really need to spend money on that stuff should these men really be cheating on their wives and you're helping them cheat on their wives or their husbands or whatever however you're no you don't i don't know why nobody's talking about this i mean it's not like anybody's gonna watch this channel or anything but this is what's happening and this is where we need to stop it 300 dollars for a hammer what does that hammer do that another hammer doesn't do government contracts that aren't fulfilled that just keep going in perpetuity it's like okay a government contract somebody's supposed to get hired for a job that's supposed to end in one month but they don't finish the job so they have to keep paying them until the job is finished they take two years to finish the job that was supposed to be done in a month and they get paid for two years do you know that that's going on 
crazy shit like that. People know how to finagle things. A lot of these government contracts are taken by relatives of people in the government that tell them to create these companies and then they give them the contract. Millions and billions are being taken away. Nobody's auditing it. Nobody's looking at it. Nobody's saying, why is this happening? We're too busy, distracted by Kanye and anti-Semitism. People are allowed to have their own opinions. You don't have to like it. You don't have to believe it. But in this country, we're allowed, we're supposed to be allowed to say whatever we want. Doing are two different things. I can say something, but the moment I put my hands on another human being and I hurt them, that's different. Then you have to pay for that. But to say what you're... Why are we not allowed to speak? I grew up in the 80s. I'm sorry, you guys. I grew up in the 80s. I saw people. They were fucking crazy. They said the craziest shit. Watch Richard Pryor. He cursed like a motherfucker. And he was allowed to. It was funny. He said some stuff. George Carlin? Best comedians ever. Oh my God, don't even get me started on Eddie Murphy. He was amazing. And you guys condemn him now? All of these people were amazing. They were outside thinkers. They said the truth. And we listened and you were like, it's fucked up, but it's true. It's fucked up, but it's true. But now we can't even say it's fucked up, but it's true. It's fucked up, but it's true. It's... You know what I mean? You knew who the racist people in your neighborhood were. You're like, stay away from them. They're racist. And they would call you names. Like, you fucking crackety ass cracker. You nigga, you this, you this, that. All this stuff they would say. All these horrible things. But you knew. That's racist Joe. That's, you know, Big Bertha. This is, uh, you know, Crazy Pete. And then these people are better than everyone. This is like, you know, Buffy and her husband, Brett. You know, like you just, you, everybody had their category. You knew who they were. You knew what they stood for. You even knew what political party they were going to vote for. But nobody cared because we were all neighbors. There was that one person that had a party, invited everyone, and everyone got along at the party. Nobody was hurting each other. Nobody hit each other. Nobody blew up anything. There wasn't hate. There was just an understanding that we're different. And that's okay. This is how they are. I'm not like that, but I know to stay away from them because they're crazy. That person's crazy. Stay away from them. But if that person was hurt, you brought them soup. Hey, Crazy Joe, here's some soup. I heard you were sick here because you cared about Crazy Joe. You cared about racist Mike. Oh, that guy says everything that comes out of his mouth. You knew he had hate in his heart, but you still knew them. They were people and you acknowledged their humanity. And there was love and respect there. Even though there was like disagreement, there wasn't pure hate ever, ever. But now there's hate in a society where people are so fake. You can't even say what you want to say. People used to say the most crazy shit in the 80s. But you were like, oh, well, you know, that's the way it is. And you just kept it moving and lived your life. Live the American dream. Did what you had to do. Go dance. Party. Live your life. Pay your taxes. Have a good time. You can't do that anymore. Now they want to take away all your money. You say something you don't like. They want to freeze your accounts. I'm not agreeing with this person. But I don't think that what's happening is right. That's his opinion. You don't want to work with him. You don't have to work with him. That's fine. I get that. I do. I really do. But... John Stewart said it best when he was like, we're going to put people in the corner because they don't agree with what you agree with. Everybody feels the same way. Oh, a lot of people feel, but they don't say it. So they get rewarded for not saying it, but feeling it, but they say it with their money. They say it with their actions and they say it with what, what, however they need to say it, but they're not just, they're not saying it, but they're saying it. This guy's just saying it, but he's not doing anything. He's not hurting anybody of any race. He's just saying, this is what I've seen. And he's given examples. This is what I've seen. You know, you, this is this is in the 80s where we would look at it and be like, oh, well, that's some truth to that. I don't see that anyway. Well, I'm going to go mow my lawn. 
but at least you had the knowledge and the information. You didn't put people on bow bow <coughs> on timeout. <coughs> you should be allowed to say whatever you want to say. Actions speak louder than words. And he said something, and everybody's else, everybody else's actions showed you, and basically <coughs> solidified what he said. They have so much control that they can make me broken one day. That's control. That's he didn't lie about anything he said. Because we saw it. Now, if it hadn't happened, then we could say he's lying. Look, you said all that stuff. Nothing happened to you. But he said it, and then things happened. And that's when you know that there's control and there's truth to what he's saying. Do I agree with it? No. <coughs> but I can't deny what I'm seeing. I can't deny. Sorry, I have, <coughs> I have long COVID. And a cough that won't go away. So I'm actually going to see a doctor this week about it. Um, it's just a tickle in the back of my throat. It could just be allergies because I have a cat. Maybe if I get rid of my cat, everything will go away. But I don't want to get rid of my cat. I'm not ready yet. If I get pregnant, I'll probably get rid of the cat. Because I don't, I'd rather have a safe baby in pregnancy than a cat. But right now, I'm not getting rid of my cat. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So I'm looking at it as an outsider because I, I never liked Kanye West. I'm not going to lie. I never liked the fucking guy. Never. All his music, I was like, catchy. I get it. But I never agreed with half of the stuff in his music. I just didn't agree with it. The way he lived his life. I don't. But I'm looking at the situation and I'm like, well, he said something and look at what's happening to him. So clearly there's a bunch of people with a lot of power that are hurting him. Isn't that what he just said? There's a bunch of people with a lot of power that can control and change your whole life. And, and now look. I mean. I don't have to be a genius to see what is going on right now. And what's really interesting is right away they said something like. Oh. But they put Britney Spears in a conservatorship. Should we put Kanye in a conservatorship? And then it made me think. They were controlling Britney. Like, we all knew that. But they were probably controlling her because she was like him and she didn't want to follow the rules and do what was expected of her. So then they took her money, which is a perfect example of what they're trying to do with this person. Oh, you don't want to play by the rules? So now we're going to take everything we gave you, supposedly, and we're going to take it all away. And then you have all these other celebrities that are coming out saying, well, I got out of the industry eight, nine, ten years ago because of the same thing. And I was like, you're not going to blackball and blacklist me. I resign. I'm walking away with what I got. And they left it. They got blackballed. And that is exactly what he said. This could also be the distraction that we need so you don't see what's going on. What are they distracting you from? Goes right back to the beginning of this video. What are they distracting you from? This is a big distraction. It's got people talking everywhere. What are they distract? What are they doing right now that they don't want us to see? He's running for president. Another distraction. They did the same thing with the Trump presidency. Right? And that's how Trump won. They were distracted by all these other people that people voted for. Instead of consolidating their votes and voting for two major candidates, they voted for all these little distractions. And that's what made, allowed someone to win, supposedly. I don't know, whatever. Don't let him be a distraction. Do whatever you want with your life. But at least I said it. Someone said it. This is a distraction. Huge distraction. Giant distraction. What are they distracting us from? The only advice I have for everyone watching this video, save your money. Stop buying the dumb shit. I bought, look, look at all this. I bought the dumb shit. I fell into this crap. You know what I mean? But I use all my dumb shit and I'm not buying, I don't need to buy anything for the next five to 10 years. I'm literally set. You know what I mean? Like, so now save your money, buy as much solid gold and solid silver bars and then like have the bar cut in half and then grind it on a stone and make sure that shit is solid and it's just, just gold on the outside or silver on the outside. Buy gold, buy silver, save it. 
buy properties, buy real estate, which might not mean anything because if this is what I've heard from my educated upper class friends, whatever, we owe so much money to China that they own us. They can come in and take over this country at any time. So if you buy a lot of real estate in America, it could be taken by the Chinese government at any time because we owe them money. And the, the, the land is basically, it's not really yours. It's the governments that they're basically lending you because they bought it. But at any time they can do eminent domain. If you know what that is, if you or unless you forgot what happened on the Texas border with the eminent domain. At any point, the government can take it back and give you fair market value for your government, for your property. But in reality, if the government's taken over by another government because we owe them money, they basically own us, then you lose everything anyway. We just gave up a port in California because we owe the Chinese so much money. So now, why do you think everything's so cheap? You get something from China, it's $2, including shipping. Why? Because America has to honor practices with china because we owe them so much fucking money we give them a port you know what a port is that's all billions of dollars gave it to them here doesn't even touch the trillions that we owe them giving them land here here's land do you guys know that does anybody know that are you guys aware of that look it up we give them a port so they don't have to pay for all the shipping stuff plus we're shipping it for free in america it's two dollars how do you think it got to your house the usps why don't you think we're charging them? Because we owe them so much money. Hmm. Think about that. Are you guys not seeing this? I mean, I could just think about that and be like, why is it? I could buy something for China for $10 in a big ass box that I know that if I'm shipping in America, it costs me $14 for a medium flat rate box to ship in America. I'm not even going overseas. It costs me $14. But for China, I get this big ass heavy box for $10 delivered to my house but if I want to return it it cost me like 25 to 60 dollars to return it but I paid 10 dollars for it with shipping that's why if you didn't know learn you guys I had looked at it I was like why is this happening and I looked it up because I'm like this doesn't make any sense <coughs> if it doesn't make sense look it up what you want to do is you want to look up the first page that pops up on Google and then the ninth or tenth page, maybe the third or fifth. Because the answer is not always in the first page. The generic answer is in the first page, but the real answer might be on the third, fifth, ninth, tenth page, hidden in the back somewhere. Because the people that don't want you to know the answer <clears throat> have so much money, they can pay for all this information and everything to be moved forward, right? SEO, you can pay for that, to, for your, your, your posting to be pushed forward. Whoever has the most dollars can pay for it. So all this fluff in the first few pages are what's covering up the answer that you're looking for in the back. Now you know. Can't say you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, but now you know. Big things like this happen. Look for what they're trying to distract you from. Look for the truth. You can be willfully ignorant or you can look for the truth. Now, there's so many facets of truth. My truth is different from your truth, different from his truth, different from her truth. Because we're all raised differently. We all have different beliefs. We all think different things are right. So truth is actually perspective, like uh, perception. How do you see it? What is right? What is wrong? Right now, I just met someone who told me that about what's going on in Iran. I had no idea that they killed a girl because she wrapped her hair thing incorrectly. A teenager. And because of the new government regime and the dictatorship, I don't know what's going on in that government. I haven't done my research, but I got to go do it. But she came in to go see the protest that they had at the UN this last Saturday about that. What's going on in Iran? I didn't know that. Why? Because Americans are not really up to date on world culture. Like, yeah, I read The Economist every now and then. I try to see what's going on. You know, I watch BBW, um, BBC. <laughs> BB <laughs> plus size fashion for plus size women. BBW. Um, no, <laughs> the BBC to get like, you know, what's happening in the world and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> um, I was doing research on a lot of like plus size clothing and fashion and things like that because I, anyway, I'm mean, it's a whole nother subject. But it's interesting that a lot of people don't keep up. They're too distracted trying to look cute. 
acrylics. I don't have acrylics. These are actually glue on nails because it's cheaper and I don't have time to like deal with all that. And I'm not going to pay somebody $50, even though I'm not trying to mess up the economy because those person, those people need to make money too. But, oh my God, look, I got my acrylics. There's some, there's some people out there that always talk about their acrylics and they talk about their makeup and their hair and their Dior. And don't get me wrong. I'm guilty of that too. I'm not saying I'm not. I really am guilty of that. And I'm totally admitting it. Um, but I don't spend that much time on it. Like I make whatever I need to do. And then my normal everyday life doesn't entail any of that stuff. Barely only when I'm around certain people that it matters to them. That they care if I'm wearing a Dior bag or, you know, I have expensive jewelry. Like those are the people I'll dress up for them. But if you think about it, you heard me. I'll dress up for them. It's like a circus at a clown. Like at a circus, uh, a clown at a circus, sorry. I'll dress up for them. If that makes them feel comfortable and more at peace, I could do that. They're just clothes. They're just jewelry. But for some reason, certain people feel more comfortable when you wear certain clothes and jewelry around them. When I used to go business to business in my Ralph Lauren suit and alligator shoes in the hood, I was fucking terrified, but nothing happened to me. Nobody ever hurt me. Nobody ever came to me. Nobody ever stepped to me. Nobody ever. They looked at me like, is she a cop? <laughs> Who's this chick in this neighborhood dressed like that? Why is she? I was going business to business selling certificates for a freaking spa or like the Marlins or like the White Sox. These are all the promotions at Park Central Hotel, whatever. I was doing my job, going business to business. But clothing will change the way somebody perceives you. Whether your hair is done or not, whether it's nice and neat. Remember that whole dread, dreads and braids not being professional for the office space? Because it's not nice and neat and clean and trim. And then you have the whole argument of like Native Americans with the long hair and it being like your power and they want you to cut your hair so they can take your power. I've read and watched all all of, I'm doing a whole documentary on it, you guys. I'm not just talking to talk. I have receipts. I have, you know, things that are there in writing, justifying it. But then who wrote it? Why did they write it? Did they get paid to write it? Is, there is it their personal opinion? Is it their personal experience? These are things you got to think about as well. Why are people saying what they're saying? I'm talking about what I believe in and what I've seen. I like the 80s. I liked the crazy fucking 80s where everyone was able to speak their mind you can curse until your fucking face fell off you can say things that you can't say anymore i like that and i get why somebody would vote for, to have that freedom back but why did that freedom get taken away in the first place there was nothing wrong with it well i take that back some people were being disenfranchised some people were being stereotype they weren't given opportunities so they took away the language to offer more opportunities to more people so it made sense but then it took away a part of personal freedom that is causing people to side with people who are trying to take away again your personal freedom but they're using giving back your personal freedom as their platform to take away your personal freedom do you see what i'm saying i'm gonna stop because it's starting to ramble and make a lot of like waves and I could talk for hours about stuff like this but I just want you guys to think you wonder why my background is like this it's a distraction are you listening to me or are you trying to see what's in the background 